Today is July 11th, and as usual, I'm going to be taking a look at the newest items in Halo Infinite Store and determining whether or not they're worth your money. So, this is Game Magpies, I'm Magpie Leon, and let's jump straight in. As far as new stuff goes this week, there is only two new bundles. So, first of all, we'll obviously go over the repeats, starting with today's daily, which is the Cold Forest coating for the Bandit Rifle. This coating costs 300 credits for just one weapon coating. I wouldn't really say that's worth it, I do think that's quite overpriced. The coat in itself is fine, it's a more faded version of Epsilon Spring. Overall, not a bad coating, but like I say, 300 for just one wiping coating, I don't really think is very fair. Next up is the ULLR bundle, but this time on sale for only 1,200 credits. I believe it was originally released at 1,600, or potentially 1,400, I could have that a little bit wrong. But anyway, the set is back on sale, and in this bundle you get the ULLR helmet, the Rusty Armadillo armor coating, the Farlight helmet attachment for ULLR, the Rockamuck Hippo Tooth chest attachment, you also get some shoulder pads, you get some knee pads, you also get some gloves and a utility piece, as well as the ICU nameplate, armor emblem, weapon emblem, and vehicle emblem. Overall, for 1.2k, not a bad set, definitely a good armor set for Rick Shasta, especially. I do like the coating, I do like some of the other armor pieces. It's not my personal favorite for the core, but if you are looking to drip out your Rick Shasta a little bit, and you've been wanting ULR for a while, now is the best time to get it. Next up, we have the return of the Fire and Frost set, again also on sale for 500 credits. Technically, this isn't the first time it has returned for that price, as it was on sale for 500 in like the catalogue the other week, but that was never presented on the store, so most people wouldn't have known that. Anyway, the bundle is here, and in this bundle you get the Vermilion Fire Armor Coating, the Vermilion Flame Armor Coating, and the Vermilion Wrath Coating. These are all technically the same armor coating, but you get it on the Mark 7, Yoroi, and the Mark 5B. You also get the Snow Whisper Battle Rifle Coating and the Veerglass Memory Coating for the Bulldog and the Sniper, as well as the Trash Removal Stance and the A Tempest of Blades Emblem. Now for 500, I can definitely get behind this much more than it was originally, it was originally released at like 1,200 or something like that, and that price definitely wasn't worth it, but for 500, I can definitely get behind this a little bit. The Iron Man coatings as they've been dubbed by the community are pretty cool, the weapon coatings are pretty nice. It'll probably be one that I skip out on, but I do think this pricing is much better. Our super bundle this week is another legendary armor bundle, this time focused on season 1. This bundle was leaked ages ago and has finally released. It costs 2,200 credits and gives you the Stormfall armor set, Anubis and Hazip. If you were to buy them individually, the cheapest of these three is the Hazup armor set, returning for just 800 credits. In this, you get the Tasman Hunter armor coating, the Hazup helmet, the Mark 55 CBRN helmet attachment, the Merc visor, you also get a chest piece, the Hazup shoulder pads, the Type Haz knee pads, and the To The Front stance. For 800 credits, this is definitely a pretty solid set. I do like Hazup, I think it's a very nice set, especially for the Mark V B core. And again, if this is another one you've been wanting for a while, now is realistically the best time to get it. Next up, we have Anubis, which is back for 1,000 credits. In this, you get the Arctic Void armor coating, the Anubis helmet, the Sabertooth attachment for the helmet, the Buckingham visor, not too sure how to feel about that one. You also get the Ephraim shoulder pads, and the Type SP knee pads, as well as the Vigilant Watch stance. I do like Anubis, it is one of my favourite helmets on the Mark 7 core, so overall this is a pretty solid option, and overall I would argue it's a pretty solid bundle too. And then finally we have Stormfall. In this bundle you get the Limed Ash armor coating, the Stormfall helmet with the Gungnir Mod 6 helmet attachment, so if you liked Gungnir and Reach, this is Halo Infinite's Gungnir. You also get the you also get some nice gloves here, the Malachite Plate Chest Attachment, you also get the Gordius Shoulder Pads, the Type MR Knee Pads, and the Patrol Formation Stance. Again, another solid bundle for the Mark 7, you get a pretty bulky chest piece, some nice shoulder pads, and although I'm personally not a fan of Stormfall or Gungnir, I know it does have its fans out there, so again, this is realistically the best time to pick this bundle up. And obviously you can get all three together in the Season 1 Legendary Armor Super Bundle, which costs 2,200 credits, which honestly isn't that bad of a price. Now, finally, we can move on to the new stuff, starting with the Cobalt Adjacent Bundle. In this bundle, you get the Cobalt Adjacent Coating for every armor core. Overall, this one isn't that exciting. It's not bad by any means, but I do feel like we have a few that are somewhat similar. However, the benefit here is that you do get it for every armor core, and like I say, it's not a bad coating, it's just one that doesn't really personally excite me. You also get the Coil Toil Weapon Charm. This bundle costs 800 credits, and personally, like the ones last week, I don't think it's worth that price. This is essentially just one coating and a weapon charm for 800. I do think that is definitely overdoing it. If it was maybe 5 to 600, that would be much better. And our final new bundle actually gives us some new armor pieces for the Hazmat Armor Core, starting with the Ash Moor Helmet. This also comes with the D-Guard Filter Pack Helmet Attachment. You also get some nice shoulder pads here. 
the Volt Spark Hub chest attachment and the Pro Tech Cap It knee pads. But the bundle doesn't stop there as you also get the Melon Cooling Weapon Coating for every single weapon. This is another very bright and vibrant one. Uh, overall, not a bad one, just not one I'd personally use. And you also get the Everglade Armor Coating again for every armor core. Again, this is another very bright and flashy one. Not one for me personally, but it's not too bad. However, this bundle does also come with the Biofoam Stance, which is a pretty nice one. I do actually like that stance. And the Dustin Echoes Weapon Charm. For 1600 it is a bit of a pricey bundle. I do wish these were released individually, as the only thing I'm even remotely interested in here is the armor pieces for Hazmat. I think it is very stupid that it's all in one big bundle. I think these are the kind of things that could be released separately, and to be fair, they might be released separately in future anyway. I don't necessarily think the pricing is bad, I just wish these things were released separately instead. As for this week's ultimate reward, it is currently scheduled to be the Cascadia Visor. This isn't the most exciting ultimate reward, it's not a bad visor, don't get me wrong, but this might not be one that I end up grinding for. However, I'd argue the ultimate challenge itself is worth doing if you're still trying to level up your battle pass. As for this week's Spartan of the Week, this submission comes from Fireteam Abyss, and it is a pretty nice Yuri Spartan making use of that Gulf Shore coating that was released last week. Overall, I like the armor choices here, I think it's pretty nice, and he's definitely ready for the Tenrai event next week. Anyway, if you want the chance to be featured as the Spawn of the Week, make sure to join the Discord, I will leave a link to that in the pinned comment, and all you need to do is send a picture of your Spawn to the Share Your Spawn channel. We do also have a new looking for game role in there, so if you want to group up with some fellow Halo players, maybe to tackle ranked or tackle baiting battle or whatever else, make sure to set yourself up with a role. Anyway, that sums up all of the major stuff this week, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.